you know what you should do. You should follow me on Twitter at Brummer018. Link in the description. Do it now. Hello everyone, Brahma18 here. Thank you so much for joining me today in another installment of our FIFA 20 Custom Tactics series. A series in which we not only recreate real life systems and tactics, but also we adapt them slightly so that they will actually work within FIFA 20. So far, so good for us. We've covered a whole range of different systems, but today, and to a lot of yours' pleasure, we move on to the Sir Alex Ferguson 4-4-2 tactic with Manchester United of the 2007-2008 uh, season. Oh my word, this has been the most requested by you guys in the comment section, along with the Arsenal Invincibles uh, under Arsene Wenger. Uh, these two have just constantly been requested demanded in fact so today we will do one of them and it is the alex ferguson 442 of course very very successful system and season it was renowned for having won not only the premier league but also the uefa champions league as well uh, and throw in the community shield in there as well because why not of course this, this tactic which included the troublesome trio of wayne rooney carlos tevez and of course one cristiano ronaldo now of course we don't have the personnel available to us now we are having to use the uh current manchester united side which of course isn't quite as good as uh, that one back in 2008, I think that's fair to say. But um, we'll try to recreate it to the uh, best of our ability with these players. So, let's uh, stop rambling now. Let's get into the tactics. So, of course, it is a 4-4-2. But the first things first, though, what you want to do is you want to make sure you've selected 4-4-2 holding, not 4-4-2 flat. And the reason being is that it's purely down to those central midfield players. Generally, of course, you'd have uh, changes... Uh, but generally, you'd have uh, Carrick and Skulls in there. Maybe you'd also have the likes of an Anderson in there as well. Um, players along this sort of line. Giggs would occasionally come into the centre, but very rarely. Um, but we're focusing on it being Carrick and Skulls. Um, so the reason being is that you basically, they're never going to be really storming into the box. So you want them staying back at all times. Of course, you've got this front four causing problems and that's what it's about really. A lot of it is about maintaining the structure um, and being rigid and, and solid in defence. But then you've got these front four talented players, which would have been, uh, say, Ryan Giggs, Ronaldo, Tevez and Rooney. Uh, occasionally you'd throw someone like Nani in there as well on the wing. But it would have mainly been those four. So you let those four do their thing. Sometimes a fullbacks would venture up occasionally um, and overlap. But these two centre midfielders will remain uh, compact and they'll stay back so as to uh, try and prevent the counter-attack. So you want it to be 4-4-2 four, four, uh, holding rather than 4-4-2 four, four, flat. So we got that formation sorted. There's no position changes you need to worry about. So we'll move it straight onto the instructions and we'll start with a goalkeeper. This would have been Edwin van der Sar at the time. In terms of um, you know, say, like being a sweeper keeper and stuff, you don't need to worry about that too much because we're not going to push the defensive line, you know, as high up as possible. But in terms of the crosses, you actually want him to come for crosses. And the reason being is that this is where we adapt the, the, the tactic a little bit to suit uh, the game. Uh, and in this case, coming for crosses, uh, the, you know, crosses and corners in particular, quite hard to defend on this game. So, um, you know, if your goalkeeper comes out and is aggressive in those situations and, you know, punches it away or catches it, etc., just relieves the pressure off you a little bit to defend it. So uh, have that and come for crosses. The two centre-backs, perfectly fine. No need to change them to play a strike or join the attack, anything like that. Stay back while attacking normal interceptions. We say this in every video, and I'm going to say it again. Unless specified otherwise, always keep their interceptions on normal. Because if you change the conservative, they they play too passive, in my opinion. And don't look to um, you know intercept the ball when it's there, even though it, it does say so. Trust me, it doesn't work properly. And in terms of aggressive interceptions, you'll find that it will drain your player's stamina a lot more. Um, so unless it's in particular, you know, specified and it's, you know, important to the um, the tactic, don't change it. So just leave all the interceptions in this side on uh, normal. 
Moving on to the fullbacks now, they will both have the same instructions. In terms of attacking run, you actually want this on balance. Now, of course, they will occasionally um, join the attack. Uh, in in real life um you know they wouldn't always be staying back etc but not all the time you wouldn't see them constantly overlapping and the reason being is that of course you've got this front forward to 442 so you've got less players in the central midfield to offer protection um, and of course the front four are getting forwards they're getting into the box in crossing situations so if you if these are overlapping as well all the time then uh, you're going to find that um you know, you're going to leave too much space in, in behind for the counter-attack, etc. So you want that on balance. And in terms of the run type, um, you want that on overlap. Therefore, it gives the wingers the opportunity to cut inside, which in particular saw Ronaldo do so much in this team all the time. Half of his goals are scored in his left foot, to be honest. So talented. Um, so it just gives them that option as well. So balanced attacking runs and also on overlap as well. And you'll get that nice sort of balanced varied feel to them moving in to the um center midfielders now first of all you've got this uh, whole carrick and skull sort of mix of course we're using pogba and mctominay which isn't actually a bad uh, midfield combination to be fair um so we're going to say this one is skulls on the right there's not too much difference actually in the player instructions more with how you deal with them in game so, first of all, what you want to do is in terms of defensive behavior, again, this bit is slightly adapted for the game. You want to change it to man mark. And the reason being is that um, on man mark, I tend, I found playing FIFA 20 this year, it keeps you a lot more solid at the back. Because um, if you cut passing lanes out, you're leaving players too open and you're giving them the opportunity to get shots away, etc. Don't take anything down to chance. Mark up tight as this would start, as this says and uh, man mark then you're giving them less options to play through and they're sort of having to really try and work on opening so you want both of them to be on man mark and in terms of attacking support stay back while attacking uh, and then mix this in as well with um, cover center so stay back while attacking um, they will still venture forward um, occasionally but the most important thing is they're going to stay on the edge of the box um, because of the fact that they're holding midfielders and they're on stay back so that is really where they're at their best skulls and carry again like i say you never see them venturing into the box they do their work um, on the edge and from deep in particular paul skulls he'd um perhaps advance into those sort of spaces and stuff and then look to spray passes and lay it off to people whereas someone like michael carrick would look to receive it from uh, from the defense from the wide men or, or what have you um, and then lay it off to more creative players letting them do the work so uh, we're just going to change him as well um, and then in terms of the defensive position the reason I want you to cover center is because if you're covering wing of course like I say you've only got two center midfielders again so if they're covering wing and they're coming out wide you're going to leave yourself very open in the middle and teams are just going to be able to play right through you so you want to change this to cover center and it will give you that structured feel when you're off the ball Moving on to the wingers now. Now, of course, slightly different instructions depending on who it is. The right midfielder in this case is going to be Cristiano Ronaldo who, um, instead of Jesse Lingard. And the left midfielder is going to be um, another Welshman, but not um, Daniel James. It's going to be Ryan Giggs. Uh, so first of all, we'll have a look at the Ronaldo instructions. Now, of course, so, so good on the ball and you're going to see that sort of in playing the instructions here so first of all come back on defense um of course you're going to have those two banks of four then when you're defending very important um to have that if you're leaving players sort of um forward in this case ronaldo you haven't given him that sort of space the opposition you're giving them that sort of space to play in that area wambi saka or in this case it would have been wes brown um would have been too isolated then uh, and he could just be doubled up on all the time so you want him to come back on defense then in terms of chance creation you actually want him to cut inside and like i say um I mentioned earlier actually so many of his goals were scored from cutting inside onto his left foot and just having a pop and um so this is going to be replicated in this tactic via chance creation cut inside and then that will be um, complemented by the fact that you want him to get into the box for the cross. And again, what you'd find is with Manchester United a lot, because it was based around this front four so much, just sort of, you know, showcasing their talents, etc. Um, there'd be a lot of their goals would be scored by um, getting into the box for crosses. They'd be on the receiving end. Usually it'd be gigs whipping the ball in. 
And then you'd have Ronaldo, Tevez and Rooney marching into the box. And again, that's where um, it sort of complements cutting side. And then on support runs, you actually want this uh, just on balance. That's more than fine. Uh, and that all links into the fact that this formation is very balanced, it's very varied and they could do a whole lot and they used to win games in a whole lot of ways um, and that's what you're tr we're trying to sort of replicate here in this tactic, we're trying to give um, you know, anyone who's playing this system just sort of the option to, to mix and match depending on the opposition and moving over to uh, Dan James or Ryan Giggs on the other side. Again, you want it to be uh, similar. Come back on defence, get into the box for the cross again. So you've got that option going forward when whipping balls in. But this time you actually want him to stay wide. And that's the thing with Giggs. A lot of the time he'd be the one whipping balls in. And uh, that would be helped by the fact that he's staying wide rather than cutting inside. He um, he was fine on his right foot, but, you know, it wasn't... He wasn't as omni-footed as, say, Ronaldo, where you, you just believe he can do anything on either foot and it makes no difference. Um, you know, with Giggs, he very much favours his left foot. So you want him to stay wide and it gives you that sort of um, option to, to whip more balls in. And that's another thing I want to mention. Remember, don't be afraid to start whipping crosses in, in this system. That's half of, um, well, it, you know, it was a, a big part of uh, the attacking system. You know, do not be afraid. It's not about um, what we see a lot of modern modern day football, particularly with well, just with so many teams, Man City or someone. They're just trying to play it into the box all the time. It's supposed to be neat. It's supposed to be calculated. Um, you know, in this system, don't be afraid to whip balls in because you've got players storming into the box and it's varied. You know, that's what it's all about. So, um, you know, like I say, try different things. Try different things. So now we move on to the two strikers. We're going to say that Rooney is Rashford in this situation and uh, Martial is um, Carlos Tevez. So we'll start off with Rooney. Rooney was very much the one who would be um, getting in behind. And uh, the reason being is that you would then have the, uh, the other striker, Carlos Tevez, would be dropping off creating more space, picking up the ball from deeper because, of course, the two central midfielders aren't advancing up the field. So with Rooney, first of all, you've got him on getting behind, but also you've got him on drip wide. And the reason you want that is because then, one, it creates um, a complete mayhem for the centre-backs because usually you'd have two centre-backs um, matching up against these two strikers. They'd be man-marking the strikers. And if one striker's coming out wide, the centre-back is then you know torn between do I go with my man or do I stay here? And if he goes with his man, then of course he's going to leave all of that space wide open for someone like Ronaldo who cuts inside a lot to march into. And it's going to give him just absolute, well, the opportunity to cause absolute mayhem. Or... Um, let's say he uh, he drifts wide and the centre-back decides to stay, then he'll be in space, he'll receive the ball, and then he's got options marching into the box with these um, other front three forwards. So drift wide and getting behind. And also, you want comeback on defence. Now, this bit, again, slightly adapted for the, uh, for the game. Uh, in this case, whenever I play a 4-4-2 on FIFA 20, I'll always have one of my strikers coming back on defence just to give myself more support because usually the people who you come up against will have uh, midfields with either five players in um, or minimum, you know, three central midfielders. Uh, and so as a result, you just don't want to get overrun if you can help it. So if a striker can come back as well, um, you know, that, that really helps them out. And Rooney would have been the best uh, option for this as the more energetic forward. Um, on the other hand, we've got Carlos Tevez here. And like I say, Rooney getting in behind. Tevez was the one who would drop off more because very, very good technically. Of course, so was Rooney as well. But Rooney had a lot more energy than Tevez. Tevez, of course, a lot stronger. He could drop off, drop off, play if he's back to goal. He can marshal uh, opposing defenders. Um, excuse the pun there as we are on Anthony Martial. And, um, you know, it worked out just so, so well for him. Him and Rooney complemented each other, um, you know, just perfectly. So you want him on false nine. And with Rooney drifting wide, you want him to stay central as well. And to uh, complement the fact that Rooney, well, Rashford in this case, would be dropping back, uh, you want Martial to uh, stay forward in this situation. So that rounds off the per player instructions now we move on to the tactics and first of all we have defense so you want to change this to pressure on heavy touch and the reason being is that generally what happens on pressure on heavy touch is they're going to drop back uh, and get you know form back into their uh, two banks of four 
and into their positions. But pressure on heavy touch means they're not being passive. If the opposition makes a mistake, if there are loose passes, loose touches, etc., they're going to press when they need to. Um, and again, it's all about being varied and balanced so they can do both. And this, um, you know, shows it perfectly really being able to do both so you want pressure on heavy touch there and then in terms of the width usually what we do is um we uh well what i talk about having a, a narrow defense well actually you're gonna change it a little bit here um and you're gonna put it up to five and the reason being is that man united um in this system in the 0708 442 we're perfectly happy to have a little bit wider um, of, uh, of a back four and of a midfield. And the reason being is that they've got quick defenders. The likes of uh, Ferdinand, Vidic, who had underrated amounts of pace, to be fair, ever, etc. And, um, you know, also energetic midfielders. Um, you know, they have the pace to cover those larger areas and larger grounds. And the reason why they'll want to, um, you know, raise the width on top of that is because they also want to stop crosses coming into the box and they want to stop overloading people overloading them on the uh, on the wide side as a result so if you change this to five here um you know you should be okay you shouldn't find people um you know playing through you too much but of course you've got to sign the right person now whatever you're playing this on if you're doing it on career mode maybe playing it on kickoff or ultimate team etc you can use this system on ultimate team as well you gotta make sure you have the right person now so you need well, basically, don't have slow defenders because then that's when you're going to start to uh, to notice, you know, uh, cracks and stuff and, and spaces opening up. So if you keep that at five, that will work just fine. And then moving on to depth, you actually want to raise this just to six. And the reason why you don't want it too high is, um, you know, you don't it doesn't need to be high. And the reason being is that they don't pressurize all the time and they're not trying to look to play on the front foot all the time. So you move it down to six. Again, it plays into the fact that you're going to have quicker defenders, the likes of Rio Fernand, Ever, etc., who can um, you know still play high enough to trap back and stuff if someone's trying to run in behind them. But also, um, you know, it leaves them enough sort of uh, space in front of them so that they're going to be quite compact and also ready to uh, to play on the back foot and look to uh, to counter when they win possession back. So depth six will work just fine. Now moving on to offensively. First of all, in terms of the style, balanced. This is what I keep trying to emphasize in this entire video. It's all about a balanced and varied approach. And I've done this in so many different systems. Just leave it on balance. And there it gives you the option to do um, you know, what happens in that situation. So if it's about maintaining possession, players will come short. And if you're trying to look to get in behind, play quicker on the break, etc., they'll do that too. The instructions will work in your favor there because they're so varied and balanced. So leave that unbalanced. And then in terms of offensive width, you want to keep this on five. The reason being is that um, if you've got it too wide, again, you're going to lose enough options to play short passes. So again, if the situation in game um, currently, you know, leads you to needing to play short passes, if you've got the width on the max, um, you know, it's not going to be, it's not going to be, it's just not going to happen. You know, they're going to be too spaced out, going to be too much. Um, you know, sort of pitch in between them to be able to do that. Whereas if it's too low, which you might afford because of the fact you've got less players in the middle, etc., then you're not going to be able to get it out wide and do what Man United used to do so well and 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 whip balls in and double up on the opposition, etc. So you want this on five, and again, it gives you that nice, varied, balanced option. In terms of players in the box, you want to move this to six. The reason being is that you have one man whipping it in and then the other three attackers will be getting into the box. So say Giggs is whipping the ball in, it'll be Ronaldo, it'll be Tevez and it will be uh, Rooney marching on into the box. Let's say if there's um, a fullback whipping the ball in for etc. Maybe then someone else comes into the box or maybe they uh, stay on the edge. But again, the player instructions will um, you know help that. You know, they'll complement that. So you want this on six and very much, it, um, you know, attains itself to being uh, representative of that, of the uh, player instructions and the system as well. So keep that on six. And then in terms of corners and free kicks, we always do it in every video. Move them up to four because then it's going to leave you two men back, which is enough. Um, and then you're going to have a man on the outside, on the edge of the box as well. But then it gives you enough options in the box to be able to actually pose a threat on corners because... Um, you know they can be uh, can be a little bit of a nuisance in uh, FIFA 20. So 
that will just about round it off guys we've done that in about 20 minutes uh, which is not bad at all if you guys have got any questions then do be sure to let me know in the comment section and i will do my best to get back to you i will respond to pretty much every comment as much as i can anyway um so uh, like i say if you've got any questions any queries you've got any problems with the system that you're finding um then let me know and i will uh, i will get back to you and uh, you know tell you what you can do um keep your suggestions coming in by the way please do bear in mind though i've got a massive list of tactics that i want to do um in this uh, series and i'm just trying to work my way through them so you know a lot of you are already making suggestions that i've already got on my list and i've had some suggestions before um you know i will get around to them at some point do just uh you know bear with me on that but on that note we are going to round it off there if you've enjoyed this video please subscribe to the channel for more content um, more from this series where we uh recreate tactics and also the likes of the ac milan career mode which is currently ongoing etc um you know do subscribe and um you know give them a watch on that note we are going to finish it off there thanks so much for watching and i'll see you for the next one Come on.